Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is the Session Convention Day 1. Before we do this, I'd like you to check out Stevie Faulkner's <laughs> OnlineMagic.co. That's my online magic course, over 600 videos, live sessions uploaded every week, guest lecturers. Um, and I talked to Craig Petty yesterday, and he's going to come on a lecture for us. So that's going to be great. Uh, more of that in a minute. Uh, sorry about the lighting, by the way. It's a, I can't get it right. It's, I'm in a room in a hotel, so I might look a bit orange or something, but that's right. And I've forgotten me, um, my tripod bit. So I'm going to have to borrow one, but at the moment the camera's wedged on the table, pointing up. So I'm look, we've got that weird angle. Uh, so that's why that's happening. So uh, yeah, so I've done day one of the convention. I'm going to just do a very brief bit on everybody that I saw yesterday. I did manage to see everybody yesterday, which is nice. I'm old now, so I need to sit down and watch things and not drink too much, like I did on the Thursday night before it started. Um, and yesterday was more of a challenge than it should have been. So don't do that, kids. Uh, especially if you're old. But then if you're old, you're not kids, are you? So anyway, not like I enjoy a waffle. But I'm going to um, talk about the early... So what happened is I... It's so funny because people always think I'm affiliated with Vanish and Inc. I mentioned it on the Instagram story. And the last video, and I didn't help matters by the fact that I said to Damien yesterday morning, you know, they, they, they've had a break in. So that's an interesting thing. Um, the whole area where the convention is happening, and if you've not been to a session, everything happens in one big room, big conference room. So that's great. You haven't got to go loads of different places, but that's where everything is the vanishing ink stand, all the cameras, really expensive stuff, the big setup, the stage, and someone had broken in on the Thursday night and vandalised, just vandal not, not, not stolen anything, which is always weird, isn't it? I always think if you're going to, well, this, is, this isn't advice, by the way, but I always wonder if you're going to take that risk of being a criminal and breaking stuff, but leaving thousands of pounds worth of stuff there, it, it just, anyway, it's beyond me. But, so that was a whole thing, and the Vanishing Ink team were clearly sort of trying to sort that out, the cameras were all over the floor, all that. And so I said to Damien, do you want a hand? And ended up working on re registration, which made me look even more like I was working for Vanishing. But it was nice. It's nice to have a job. And I really enjoyed, it was really interesting seeing it from the other side and seeing people come into the convention, registering, being all excited and saying hello to everybody was great. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. So that was the start of it. The first person was Matt Pritchard. Uh, he is a science magician. I didn't know much about that. And, and I saw Gustav Kuhn yesterday, who wrote Experiencing the Impossible. It was lovely to see him, and I mentioned some stuff that he's told me about in a minute. But, um, but Matt's lecture was, it was really professional. It, you could tell he, well, I don't know if he has done it a lot, but it felt like he'd done it a lot. It felt like a TED talk. It, it was, you know, straight to time, very clipped, very kind of confident. And fascinating. So you know, I'm really interested in the science of magic, optical illusions, as I know a lot of us are, but to see why and how they work uh, was really good. And he, what's his lecture I always get the wrong, it's, it's, and what next, I think, hang on, let me look. Um, and what else? So he, uh, I'm not going to go into all of it, but he's showing you little videos he made on YouTube, amazing videos that look like, you know, like his, um, he recreated the David Copperfield Bermuda Triangle illusion with the knowledge of David Copperfield, so completely under pressure. And you know, you watch this video and you see a, a little boat appear in a little tub, you know, other than a real boat, you know, which, which David Copperfield do, did, uh, in a tub. And it's, it's amazing, but it, it's a little video, and then, then he tells you how he did it. And it's the commitment and the time and the dedication to making this what looks like a little tiny, you know, it's a toy in a tub, um, was just brilliant. And he showed a picture at one point of his lab where he plays with all this stuff. And it was all prisms and lights and mirrors and all this stuff. And it was just insane. It's proper mad scientist stuff, which I really, really loved. So that was fascinating. And again, you know, you look at that stuff and go, well, I may not use this stuff, but it's, it's interesting and inspiring. And that's what I get a lot of when I see people that 
put all this time and dedication into something that on the surface may seem quite trivial, which of course it isn't, uh, it's kind of what we do, right? So we, we, we really geek out and we really get serious about a lot of this stuff. And I think that's wonderful. And I think that's really important that we do that. And that sometimes I come away from that a little bit and get a little bit lazy and watching things like that inspire me to now get, you know, do the work, look at the detail. And, uh, and I really loved it. So that was Matt Pritchard. And, uh, and I recommend, I'm not going to say loads about it because there's some nice surprises in that lecture. So if you do get a chance to see any of his stuff, I really, really suggest you put the effort in. So then it was the afternoon session. I really like these afternoon sessions. You get like three bite-sized performances or talks uh, from the lecturers and performers. So the first was Shriash Palshikar. I've not seen Shriash before. Shriash is a historian, magic historian, uh, specialising in the history of Indian magic, Indian street magic, or he was for this talk as anyway, uh, and a performer himself. And he was talking about his uncle being a performer and the, the sort of lineage and the history of Indian magicians, which I found absolutely fascinating. A lot of talks on the history of magic I can find a little bit dry. This one was absolutely brilliant. And he didn't have long, so we banged through it and he acknowledged that. But he was a really good speaker, really dynamic, obviously done a lot on this. Um, and, you know, as being a, a street performer myself and a Cups and Balls performer, it was really fascinating when he was talking about the history of that and, and the differences of that culture, you know, with all the spiritual connections as well uh, over the years and the imagery he showed with that he was talking through. It was absolutely brilliant. And the, the, also the differences in performance. So he showed us an amazing clip of an Indian street performer performing the Cups and Balls, which is very different, has a very different feel. And what I really found interesting was the fact that the backdrop of an Indian street magician is the floor. They're sitting on the floor and they're not only sitting on the floor, it's not like Covent Garden where I used to work, where it's a lovely pitch with a big portico behind you in a church and it's all very nice. You know, this is on the floor, on a street with traffic going past you. And the reactions, I just loved the reactions of the people watching it that you could hear, you couldn't see, and this performer sitting on the floor using the ground rather than the back as his, his backdrop. I just, I thought it was great, really fascinating stuff. And again, something that a lot of us wouldn't have seen or, or heard before. So as I said with Matt Pritchard stuff, I really suggest if you see this um, Shriash performing or teaching, go and watch it. Then brilliant Mike Caveney. I could listen to Mike talk for hours and hours. And actually I have listened to him talk for quite a long time before because one of my first ever gigs as a magician, well, I wasn't even really a magician, I was still doing mostly the street stuff. I wasn't really doing the cups much then, was when I got a gig, uh, with, which I've talked about before, and on that gig with, with Luis de Matos in Portugal was Mike Caveney, Stan Allen and Johnny Thompson. And I didn't really know much about them at all. But I remember sitting at dinner, listening to them all tell stories and thinking then I could listen to this for hours, which I, <laughs> I kind of did. And yesterday was the same, you have 20 minutes of Mike talking through the evolution of his trick, his, his gypsy thread for stage, which is with toilet paper, which is, I just think it's brilliant. He showed us the original version of it, which he did at, at a certain venue, and completely fooled me. And then when he tells you how it's done, it's just brilliant. And then the next version, then the next version, and he's apparently performing his latest version, version number five in the Gala Show on Sunday. But he talked about his book One. There's not very much he referenced it when he was talking about this. He wasn't selling it at all, but it just made me want to get it. But I can't, can I? Uh, but Mike Caveney was is brilliant. I love seeing him perform. I've seen him perform on stage. I'm really looking forward to seeing him in the gala show and seeing this trick and what else he does. And then Hector Mancha. You know, I was a big fan of Hector's DVD, My Silly Tricks. He's a FISM winner. He's got... He, he's one of the few magicians I know that can walk on stage and say, I like dancing and start to dance and not look utterly preposterous. I mean, there is a kind of a bit of that, but, you know, intentional because he's very funny. But he comes on, music starts, he starts playing the harmonica and he's dancing on stage looking quite cool. There's not many of us that can pull that off. And very funny. He did a brilliant uh, harmonica card trick, which I think that's what it's If I remember rightly, is it on that first DVD? I'm not, I can't remember. Really falling, really clever, and it's great. And um, someone basically names any card as he's playing the harmonica. And when he stops playing, he takes the card out of his mouth. Uh, the next trick he saw, which I thought was hilarious. He's really funny, Hector. He really, he's got a really funny way about him. He does like the five-card trick or six-card trick. 
you know, re repeating through, but just such a lovely, you know, way of doing it. So the usually is, I've got five cars, I throw away three or four, whatever, and I've got five, I've still got five, I throw somewhere, I've still got five. And just a, a twist on that trick, which is genuinely funny, genuinely enjoyable, and shows what you can add to it. And, and he's just got a lovely, I don't know, he's a clown. He's a good, really good physical comedian, really good clown. And I, I really, really enjoyed it. Next up was Craig Petty. Now, Greg Petty wasn't on the list and Hector Chadwick had, for personal reasons, not been able to come. So Craig was doing it and I haven't seen Craig lecture for a very, very long time. Of course, we've seen Craig on the socials and doing his review show as well, which is great, and his interviews, like really, really busy guy. And I was interested to see it. I didn't know what he was going to lecture. I was, I was thinking, is this going to be a a bit of a dealer then because he's obviously got a lot of products out there but it wasn't and it was I really really enjoyed it and I know I enjoyed it because Craig did two card tricks at the beginning and I really enjoyed watching them and learning them and card tricks in those lecture big lecture situations I can find quite challenging I need to learn tricks with the cards in hand so he did two tricks um, based on the cheek to cheek deck at the beginning it's the instant triumphs and really really lovely trick where it's a, there's a kind of competitive element between you and the spectator I thought they were really commercial really good tricks he is bringing out a project with Alakazam based on the cheek to cheek deck but as he said he talks you through how to make one which is super cheap super easy there's no real gimmicks involved other than double backers and stuff so uh, really really liked it then he did some work on his quantum deck which he's just given me I haven't played with the quantum deck yet I know that there were I think it's a strong effect, it's a really good effect, I, I, I'm looking forward to getting it and playing with it, but there's no doubt that when he performed it, the ways he did it, it was, it would fool anybody, and it's a, I think it's a nice simple plot, that lovely thing with a blank deck of cards, I know, I know a lot of you know this, blank deck of cards, you say I've put a jack of clubs or whatever at some point in the deck between 1 and 52, give me a number and you deal to that number, I mean, solid, right, so whether I can do it or not, whether it involves a bit, it does involve a bit of maths, but very simple. Uh, so I shall report back on that. And then he did a couple of other things that were just lovely. The, the sponge ball and a coin thing, and which I love that kind of thing. Just a sponge ball, a coin, a routine with that, very commercial, stuff you can carry around easily. And then a whole section using a big ball bearing, as he says you can get from Amazon for four quid and doing a load of really nice stuff with a coin and that. And again, that's my sort of thing. It's that sleight of hand, but not the knuckle bust inside of sleight of hand. It's kind of, I think it's what, it's what got me into magic, seeing you know, basic objects to disappear, vanish, get flattened. And, and it was great. I really enjoyed the lecture and I'm looking forward to going home and playing with some of those ideas that he had. Now, I do want to mention one thing. After this, I ran into a, a friend, Gustav Kuhn, which I used to do, I did a few talks. I did a TEDx talk with Gustav, and he wrote the book, as I mentioned at the beginning, Experiencing the Impossible, which I think is still an amazing magic book to read as a magician. I was very excited about his upcoming project, which I'm not sure I can mention, but I think everybody's going to be interested in that. But he did mention the Science of Magic um, the SOMA Science and Magic Association conference that's coming up in London. You know, Darren Brown's going to be there doing something. He's interviewing Darren Brown. Um, Laura London's there. Uh, Luke Jamey's doing something. Sophie Scott is a neuroscientist, and I think as magicians, it's really important to know the neuroscience of it. I was speaking to him yesterday, talking about how, since working with him, how my, my performance of magic has become a different thing, because if I'm worried about a certain thing, I can go, no, because I know how the brain works now, and... I know why that works. So I really, really recommend, A, experiencing the impossible, but checking out the Science of Magic Association conference. Just go online, um, Science, of, Science of Magic Association website. You'll be able to find it. But there is a show the night before, a gala show, uh, with Paul Zenon, Julius Frack, Laura London, and Edward Hilsom. And you know, as it said, four of the world's top magicians, one night in a pub, July 20th, I can't go, got the kids for my birthday. Uh, but do check that out. And, and that is at the Amersham Arms, 388 New Cross Road, London. No affiliation, just think it would be a very cool thing to go and watch if you can. Now next was Tobias Dostal. Oh my gosh, how good was it? it I, I reviewed, I love Tobias's work. I reviewed Silhouette, loved playing with it, never performed it. And 
of course, optics. And both of them, well, optics was, I wouldn't say controversial, but there's a lot of people saying you can't do it, it's too difficult, it's not practical. Well, you can clearly do it, because he did it in front of everybody, a load of magicians, effortlessly. It's such a strong effect, and it's easy to lose faith in that effect, because it's so bold. And it is knacky, as he, said, as he says, it's not easy. But, you know, to take a mobile phone from someone, film them, and then say, can you film me, make their mobile phone vanish, you know, in, eat, you can eat it, or just do a complete vanish of it, showing your hands empty, and then they realise that the phone that you've vanished, as they're filming you with your phone, the phone that they're holding is in fact their phone. It's ridiculously strong. As is Silhouette. I played with Silhouette and I loved it, and as, as soon as I get home, I'm getting out again. It's, again, it's beautiful. It, it is practical. Everybody said it was impractical. It's not, because he just got his phone out and did it there. It's brilliant. It's not practical for all situations, of course, because you have to be able to cast a shadow, but those two tricks and a couple of other things he did, he did the sunglasses production, which is, you know, fires a card into the air, it comes down and goes boom, and sunglasses appear on his face. And it's excellent. But he did a couple of things that really brought me back to those first moments where I saw magic tricks when I was a teenager that made me want to become a magician. He did a routine with a lollipop. From, it's one of the best things I've seen in so long. I love all that stuff, you know, that I used to love as a kid watching the cigarette, people do that cigarette into the ear, out of the mouth, all that kind of stuff. Just really dynamic, really lovely, beautiful illusion. Takes a lollipop, takes it out, shows it, kind of vanishes it into the paper, and then it's back in his mouth. And that's the sort of basic version of that, and there's various things he did with it. But within that, there's an illusion that is one of the best, it completely fought floor me and I'm not going to tell you what it is but it's to do with the top <laughs> it I could see the lollipop and apparently it wasn't a lollipop it was just beautiful and it made me want to go I want to do that now and I love that feeling he also did this he's released this thing with peanuts and if you read what this was you go with your peanuts vanishing completely fooled the hell out of me absolutely peanuts appearing between his hand and someone else's hand juggling peanuts making peanut free peanuts just I wanted it then and now. I didn't get it, and he's run out now, and I'm gutted, but I will. And then he showed us something he's working on, which is this idea of pouring liquid and liquid, the, the sort of appearance of liquid, and then liquid turning into a coin. The most beautiful illusion and sleight of hand I've seen without being very difficult sleight of hand. I think he is, it's an overused word, but I think he's an absolute genius. And he's one of those people that sits and thinks and thinks and thinks and thinks and finally gets there and we get the benefit of that. And I think it's really, it's a mistake I've made as well to say his stuff isn't practical, it's clearly practical because he did it in front of everybody. And I'm, I'm gonna go back reinvigorated to get Silhouette out, get Optics out and start playing with that again because I think they're real workers is an understatement, but different, unique and wonderful. And then, uh, and again, a surprise for me, and this, I'm, I don't mean this in a bad way, but Joshua J. How Magicians Think. Now, because I interviewed Josh, I did quite a lot of research, which is very rare for me, so I thought he was just going to be talking about a lot of the things that I'd heard him talk about. And the first part was an interview with, with him and Andy, which again, even though I'd heard some of what he'd said, I, again, it inspired me to go and read that book again. And by the way, my dad is currently reading that book, and this is, my dad's loving it. And if you, you don't know, How Magicians Think is a book about performing magic written for lay people based on the questions that a lot of lay people will ask magicians. And because my dad's reading it and really enjoying it, he's, he's like, he knows what I do as a magician, but he doesn't really, really know. He's seen me work a little bit, but it's, it's almost making me feel closer to him because he's reading that and going, oh yeah, Josh, Josh said this thing and I've never seen it like that. And it's rather than me bang on about it, Josh is banging on about it to him, but in a more entertaining way that I could ever done. So if, you, if you've got family members and you want to kind of really communicate what it is you do as a magician, it's, I really suggest giving them that book because it's well written, it's really nicely uh, presented, and it's very enjoyable for anybody, for a magician or a non-magician. And then there was a lovely surprise. Uh, Megan, the president of the Magic Circle, came on and presented him with his member of the inner magic circle gold star i think that's what it is yeah which was a really lovely moment uh and then he performed a load of stuff out to talk about tricks because they did talk about that a little bit as well some of the tricks you would have seen him on the socials if you look at the vanishing um 
vanishing. Facebook you will, and Insta, you will see him performing these card tricks from Talk About Tricks. He performed them, but then explained them, most of them. Uh, and they were great. And at one point, I got the cards, you know, I got the cards out and put them in my hand and was, was following along. So that's a really good sign for me. It makes me want to pick up the cards. I can't wait to get into that book and start really delving into it and learning the tricks because when you see him perform, you realise how good they are. And then he performed this cylinder in coins, which I'm very excited that I have because I've got one at home. I haven't opened it yet. I saw him do it. And I'm, I've been on the fence with cylinder and coins, really. When I see it done, I go, yeah, it's really lovely. But it, I've not ever been drawn to learn it. And when I saw Josh perform it, I, I am drawn to learn it. I suppose part of it is that I know I have the gimmick now so I can go and do it. But it, it just looks lovely. So I'm going to... I'm really looking forward to going and playing with that. But that was an hour and a half, I think it was, and I really I enjoyed the whole thing. I just let it wash over me, sat there, felt like a lay person because that's what I try and do in these situations, uh, and had a great time. And that's kind of the point, isn't it? And then the Adam Wilbur lecture. So Adam, he, he had a hard job. It's, it's very tough to come and do your show that you do kind of for lay people with the lines for lay people. And I know how tough it is because I never do it. It's, it's something that really, really intimidates me and he said at the beginning it scares the hell out of me and it is scary it's it's a different thing now he, he does have a lot to sell and what was quite nice is that all the products that he, he performed as he does for lay people he then said if you scan this qr code you'll get all the downloads and the instructions for free and then based on that you can choose whether you want to buy some of it and i really really liked it there was some good solid commercial stuff a really nice card trick called How, What and When. It won't be called that. It'll be What, When, How or something like that. But you'll, you'll know. If you go and check out Adam Wilbur's stuff, you'll see it all. Uh, stuff that I, ima I could imagine taking on stage and doing. He's got this beautiful thinking of English pound um, banknotes, which is really important. This splitter. Oh, gosh. Splits. So this multiply money. But because of it kind of makes use of the way the UK money is that it kind of merges apart and looks really really magical and he showed how you can make this and he also showed how you can make it with with playing cards with business cards uh, stuff you can put together for certain gigs and i think it's a really really nice it's a really eerie looking thing uh, and he did a nice thing with colored wallets which is fine it was good it was commercial not something that i'd really go to and then his his cups and balls his coffee cups which i'm I've, i like it i Think close up, it's a really interesting thing. There's something really nice about normal coffee cups, coffee beans, the fact there's a liquid production, it's great. It's not the most practical thing. It's not like you're gonna do table hopping with it. So if you're doing parlor, if you're doing a stage show, it's a nice way of doing it. But for me, it still needs to be fairly close up. Those coffee cups, unless you've got a really good camera with really good lighting, um, is, is a parlor thing for me. But, but I like it, it's great. I'll probably, I don't mean I do it instead of the cups and balls because I, I'm, well, because I'm old school and I've been doing it for so long. Um, but again, you can look at all of it. I love the way you put it together. I love the thinking behind it, which was inspiring. And it was a solid thing. I was gutted. I was feeling so exhausted. I left. I thought I was then going to miss the last 10 minutes. And apparently did a great thing with a kind of um, a, a clear box. Uh, what's the word? Prediction. I think it was a prediction. Someone told me it might not have been a prediction, but he had Ryland up, Craig Petty stuff, and I, you know, it's a typical thing. The, the one thing I miss out the whole day is something I'd really have loved to see, but I'm sure you can find out about it uh, from other people on the forums and things like that. And then I hung out for a little bit. It was really nice to see people like Noel Coulter. I saw some guys that gave me a nice present. Um, Atomic Lion, they were giving these out, these kind of very kind of rustic, lovely card boxes. Um, check them out on the socials. I think they're at Atomic Lion on Instagram. Again, of course, no affiliation. I'm not affiliated with anyone. No one wants to be, probably. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it was lovely. Just a re really. Long. I went to bed quite early. I was very tired because I'm old, as I said. Um, but today we've got a load of great stuff coming up. I know this is a long thing, uh, so thanks for watching. If you've got this far, if you've got any questions at all, put them below, and I'll answer them on tomorrow's video. I'll be doing a video tomorrow morning as well. And, um, and I think that's about it. Do check out onlinemagic.co. Any of the giveaway stuff we did, we'll obviously we'll do that next week because I can't do it this Thursday. And there was something else I was going to ask you. No, I can't remember. So anyway, I might go live and do a live thing, but check out the Real Magic Review Instagram stories as well, at Real Magic Review. All right, 
like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks again to Vanishing for letting me do this and enjoy.